Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Prabhu, can I take a couple of minutes to introduce you? Can I take a couple of minutes? Okay. Prabhu, dear, I'm only following your lead, as usual. Hare Krishna. This morning, we, we all have a great good fortune of having His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu amongst us. All devotees can sit here. Please sit down. So, His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu, he was born in 1956. As a teenage boy, he was an avid spiritual seeker. In 1973, when he was just 16 years old, he received a Back to Godhead magazine from one of his friends. And just within a few days, he moved into a Iskon temple in San Francisco. And then with the blessing of his parents, he became a disciple of Srila Prabhupada and a full-time monk and dedicated to the practice of Krishna Bhakti. Uh, today he lives in Iskon Silicon Valley uh, in San Francisco Bay Area with his wife Nirakula Devi Mataji, also a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Together they have developed an Iskon community of more than 300 families in Silicon Valley based on the study as well as distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, he is the president of Iskon Silicon Valley where he has inaugurated many projects. Also, he is the North American Sankirtan strategist, ISKCON's regional GBC secretary for Northern California, New York, and New Jersey. He also serves as director, marketing, and innovation at the BBT. He's the initiating guru in ISKCON, veteran yogi, author, and spiritual life coach. Prabhu travels worldwide, sharing practical wisdom in corporations, universities, and other places. For the last four de decades, he has been a very faithful practitioner of Bhakti Yoga uh, under the guidance of Srila Prabhupada and his books. And uh, personally, I have been also observing in the last uh, probably five, six years or so, uh, Prabhu gradually started uh, traveling to different parts of America and other parts of the world, inspiring the devotees to distribute books. Uh, recently, last year, I heard that uh, uh, Prabhu is appointed as a global duty officer uh, for book distribution all across the globe. He, he was supposed to inspire everybody in the world to distribute books, which he very effectively did it. Just within a span of just one year or so, he had come to India last year also. And this year also, they had several meetings. Yes, what is his name? Sri Ram Das Prabhu. Sri Ram, Sri Ram Prabhu in India. Uh, Prabhu, uh, Prabhu has a few strategic people in India and Prabhu has been through videos, through lectures, through gatherings, meetings, he has been inspiring devotees and uh, uh, they had actually targeted 10,000 Srimad Bhagavatam sites like last year. But this year, the score given by all the people in Badra Purnima went to 23,000 Bhagavatam sites. <laughs> so it was like a miracle. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not like Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam distribution, you all know, it is uh, 18, 18 uh, volume sets. So Prabhu is inspiring everybody. You all know his book, uh, Our Family Business. I read that book twice and I underlined in several parts of the book. Honestly, Prabhu, I have to tell you, the book inspired me not only to distribute books, but also to practice my Krishna consciousness very seriously. Uh, because the book has a lot of clues you are giving. Also... Uh, uh, what is uh, seriousness and what is strictness, what is sincerity in devotional service. 
So Prabhu is a very ardent practitioner. I have heard from his disciples that in Vrindavan, uh, in Vrindavan he comes every time during Kartik month uh, along with uh, his god brothers and other uh, Keshavarti Maharaj in the, in the Govardhan temple. They sit with like fifth and sixth, I mean sixth and seventh canto they completed in one one Kartik uh, month like that. Uh, in this way, two or three cantos they complete every day, practically several hours of study and uh, Govardhan Parikrama and uh, Kartik Mas Vrata. He keeps. We are all so deeply inspired. I also connect with ISP monthly once on the last Sunday uh, to address their children there. And from the quality of the children, I can say what kind of training he is offering for the members of his community. More than me giving any class, I am learning from them, uh, from their uh, sincerity in Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Prabhu, for your shining example. And uh, especially, I want to say, say a specific thanks to you for one of the personal benefits I gained from you is you, when you came to Pune here, you met my father and you did almost an hour of Kirtan. And uh, my father was, uh, actually, he was... Uh, he was in the last days, a few days of his bed. And after a week or two, he passed away. But your coming was very timely. And uh, you gave him the dose of spiritual uh, names of the Lord. I am very thankful to you. And uh, today we could have you uh, for this. Uh, this year, uh, also for the marathon, I heard in 2020, uh, all over the world, the number of Bhagavad Gita's, the whole world, Prabhu has uh, given a target for the whole world is 20 million Bhagavad Gita, is it? 20 million Bhagavad Gita. 2 million. <laughs> 2 million was not 20. Next, next year, 20 million. <laughs> 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 well, maybe with today we will do 20 million. <laughs> also, Prabhu is coming up with a book called High Sadhana. <laughs> you all know that now. The more you show, the more you sell. One of the mm -hmm. things he also says is High Sadhana. Huh? Uh, thank you, Prabhu. And uh, we are actually looking forward to having you personally in Pune in future again. But today we will uh, draw some inspiration from you and begin our marathon in Pune. Thank you, Prabhu. Let us welcome His Grace Vaishish Prabhu and Her Grace Nirakula Mataji with a loud Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hare Krishna! Wow, great to see you. Radhi Sham Prabhu, I'm so, so happy to see you and all the devotees there in Pune. As everyone knows, that um, I'm I'm one of your biggest fans. I I um <clears throat> I really admire uh, your style of devotional service and what you've done over the years so systematically when with such um in such a friendly mood. Thank you very much. I miss all of you in Pune. I'm so happy to see you. I recognize everything there, and I recognize a lot of devotees there. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Viditam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadahmayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ravunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Sadvatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitam Scha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindo, Dina Bando Jagat Pate, 
Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostude Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Ko Paturubhyascha Kripa Sindubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Garadhara Shivasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Gaur Premanande Hare Hare Bo You know, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find that Narada Muni instructs Srila Vyasadeva. When Srila Vyasadeva has completed dividing the Vedas, writing Puranas, compiling Itihasas, presenting Bhagavad Gita, but he was still dissatisfied and not completely sure why. And when he met his guru, Narada Muni, and put the case before him that I'm not feeling complete. What should I think about this? And Narada Muni was very straightforward. He said, that because <clears throat> whatever you desire to describe that's separate in vision from the Lord simply acts with different names, forms, and results to agitate the mind the way the wind agitates a boat on the water that has no resting place. And he told him that you have to be very specific. Otherwise, <clears throat> people will take it that many of the concessions you've given to accommodate people's particular mindsets and their subhava, their nature according to the modes. They'll take that and stay in the material world. He makes this case that you should adjust the way you're teaching so that people can know directly about Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even self-realization, he said, naishkarmyam apyachuta bhava varjitam na shobate jnanam alam niranjaram kutakpana shashvar abhadram ishvare na charpitam karma yadapyakaranam. Niranjana, naishkarmyam, even self-realization, working without fruit of results, nashobate jnanam. It doesn't look good if it doesn't have a chuta bhava. And so Narada Muni also instructs him that he must take shelter of the Sound vibration. Iti murti abhidane na mantra murti ma murti kam yajite yajya purusham sasam yagdarshana puman. He tells Vyasadev that the mantra is the means to see the Lord completely, directly. Iti murti abhidane na mantra murti ma murti kam. Murti means form, and it also means difficulty. And amurtika means without difficulty. So there's a way that seeing the form of the Lord may be difficult, but when you take the mantra, then it becomes amurtika. Then you can see the Lord completely. 
iti murti abhidhanena mantra murtim amurtikam yajjate yajya purusham sasam yagdarshana puman. You get the full, full darshan of the Lord. Not only that, step by step you'll develop in your relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then, of course, Srila Vyasadeva it took that instruction to heart and went to Shamyapras. Samyaprash is a place where the modes are in equilibrium. And there, Srila Vyasadeva went into a samadhi. And in his samadhi, he saw the plight of the conditioned souls who are being controlled by maya. And when he came out of his samadhi, he spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam where he there was the Bhagavad Purana, but then he made the Srimad Bhagavatam, the complete description of the, the Lord and his pastimes in the spiritual world. So that by hearing that, uh, the poor conditioned souls could be released from their attraction to the reflection of the spiritual world, this material world, Krishna says, Urdva Mula Madashakam, Ashvatam Prahurav Yajam, Chandamsi Yasya Parnani, Yasam Veda Sabeda Vit. There's a reflection of the spiritual world here, and everyone's attracted to that unless there's an intervention. Uh, the, the conditioned soul doesn't give it up. Someone has to intervene. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told that to Sanatana Goswami, Maya Mugda Jivaranati, Swata Krishna Gyan. He said, it's not Swata, it's not automatic that you come out, that conditioned soul can come out of Maya, out of ignorance. But Kripaya, out of mercy, uh, Krishna Veda Puran, he compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam, Anarto Pasanam Sakshat, Bhakti Yoga Madhoksaje, Lokasya Anajanato Vidmams, Chakre Sattvata Samhitam, is such a literature that he had compiled after seeing directly the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and then knowing that Anarto Pasanam Sakshat that the, the only process for, through which the souls could become freed from bondage is through hearing about the pastimes of the Lord. So he made the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada, when coming to perform his mission, this harrowing mission of coming by himself to a foreign country, brought with him the Srimad Bhagavatam. It was what he waited for before he came on the freighter to have the Bhagavatam to distribute. It's so substantial to have the, the Shastra in a deliverable form so that other people can take it and so that it's easy for us to take it also. We owe so much to Srila Vyasadeva, how he organized everything. And then he was in anxiety. This is, this is uh, one of the ways that we perform yagya as we put ourselves in anxiety, like Srila Vyasadeva. Isn't it amazing how he, he really wanted to know uh, what is the right formula? He, he was working so diligently empowering various disciples to help. He had an organization through which he wanted to get out the knowledge to as many people as possible. And also there's a, yeah, a way in which even he felt the, the stress. That's why he, he met his 
<coughs> That's how, why he took the case to his guru. So in spreading the Krishna consciousness movement, there's, there's an exhilaration to taking uh, some trouble upon oneself to try to help others. And Prabhupada's definition of nonviolence is so revolutionary. Patanjali in the Yoga Sutra says out of all the, the yamas, ahimsa is the most important. It's like the hoof pyramid elephant. It covers all the other yams. Yeah. But Prabhupada's definition of nonviolence is you have to actively be doing good for others in order to be considered nonviolent. And so Srila Vyasadev, we find that there he is in anxiety. And then he gets this fine tuning from his guru that this is what you need to do. It was, he was so decisive, Narada, that what's missing is Krishna Kata. All these other things are instructions. They're confusing people. They'll take advantage of them and so forth. And then, of course, to focus his mind out of a sense that I, I will bring back the, the vision of Krishna so it can be distributed to the world. That's our lineage of taking the kind of stress upon one's head in order to help others. Sages and Imasarnya. It's a thousand year sacrifice. And the whole purpose is how can we do the greatest good for others? Burini buri karmani shotavyani vibhagasha ato sadya saram samudrita manishaya bruhi badraya bhutanam yenatma suprasiditi. They're asking Sutta Goswami, how, how can we? do the best for everybody so that they can be satisfied. And how can, how can you, which message? Because burini buri karmani shotavyani, there are so many instructions. Huh? People all over the world have different kinds of cultures and instructions that, that they've learned from their ancestors, from their teachers. So how do you unite them all? in such a way that they can feel full satisfaction. What a question. If you can get a job just doing good for others, you're going to be happy. If you take it upon yourself that what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do the best I can to make everybody else happy, and then you do a research project to figure out what's the best way to do that, you'll be happy. That's the Krishna consciousness movement. That's the bare bones. That's what it really is. It's based on this impetus that how will I do the greatest good to the most number of people? Sages and Naimasaranya asking the question. And Srila Prabhupada brought that mood, nonviolence. You have to go out and actually help people and give them the opportunity to untangle themselves. How would you do it? You need what Narada Muni said. You need information from the spiritual world. You need mantra. Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami that when the soul's wandering in this world, there's two things he gets from the Vaidya, the devotee Vaidya. He has Instructions and hymns, hymns like mantras and, and the shlokas. Instructions and hymns. And then the, the soul can be cured. Another case of the mercy principle from Lord Shiva when he drank the po ocean of poison, Shukadeva Goswami points out that this is the nature of a Vaishnav. He said, Tapyante Lokatapena, Sarava Praya Sojana, Parama Aradanam Taddi, Purusha Shakilatmana. 
He said the best kind of work you can do, the best tapasya, tapena lukatapena, is to do is to take some trouble for other people, in order to uh, help them become free from the material world, to save others. Parama aradhanam. It's the best worship. Parama aradhanam. And of course, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, this is the most pleasing to me. When uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was speaking with Prabhupada, this is recorded. You can <laughs> you hear this conversation. He's asking about the various ways preachers, uh, they have sometimes when they're traveling or when they're doing other things to preach, you can't follow all the the particular pancharatric rules and regulations so strictly these things came up when the first traveling sankirtan party started in in america out of san francisco actually under keshava but in any case this was at a different time tamal krishnamaraj was asking this question and Prabhupada said that the these rules and regulations don't apply to preachers and then he quickly said but don't take it <laughs> <laughs> but don't take it. But that that indicates how important the outreach is, that mood of going out and saving others. It's the difference between the neophyte devotee and the, the Madhyama Adhikari, Ishvare Taradine Shu Bali Sheshu Dusatsucha Prema Maitri, Kripo Peksha Yakaroti Samadhyama. He knows how to give mercy. He's ready to give mercy. He wants to give it to other people as much as possible. Whereas, Charya Meva Hare Pujam Yashra Reye Hate Nathad Bhakti Shu Chanye Shu Sabhakta Prakrita Smritaha. The Prakrita Bhakta, he's a, he doesn't know how, he doesn't recognize Vaishnavas, and he also doesn't know how to do good for others. So there's a premium on this mood. It's the best, best way to worship Krishna. Most dear to Krishna is the devotee who's in this mood. Krishna says at the end of Bhagavad Gita, no one's more dear to me than this, this person. So it is high sadhana to take the trouble to go out or to invent some way to stay in and reach people so that you can transfer to them the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, they have to have it. There, there is no al other alternative to this way for men. Kurvan eve ha karmani jiji vishek shatam sama evam twai nanyate tostina karma lipite in re. You just have to have this. I mean, it's, it's imperative. Otherwise, even if you're self realized, even if you're a big yogi, you, aruya krishena paramparam tata patantyato nadrita, everyone's slipping because they don't have this. So imagine those who take a, a molecule of this mood of Srila Vyasadeva, of the great Acharyas, and they say, I'm going, to, I'm going to follow in the footsteps. We can look at great Acharyas and think, if we're chanting, we think, I want to be like them. I want to follow their footsteps. Let me be in that group somewhere. Just let me let me be with them. I'll follow, I'll do anything, but just let me be in that group. If we can develop that mood when we're chanting, it's the most beneficial. And then if we use our senses to figure out how to spread the Bhagavatam to other people, they can hear that. They can start to live it then the movements that we make, you have to do so many things. You have to figure out supply chain. You have to ship things. You have to, these uh, publishers, I have the benefit of knowing many of the BBT trustees like Brahma Muhurta Prabhu has been printing books for many years and uh, so expert. They know every kind of paper. They live and breathe how to make the book perfect. And, uh, getting these things, getting the, the books printed and out, out the door to other people and so forth. And then all these activities, 
they're all following the acharyas and the mood that Srila uh, Narada Muni was presenting to Srila Vyasadeva that I try to do good for others, try to give them this knowledge. And we're very fortunate because we can be included in that. And those who take the trouble for this are doing the best kind of tapasya. I remember once I was many years ago, I mean, I didn't have any connection with management. I artfully avoided it for many years. You just go on Sankirtan all day long, come back late. <laughs> and don't worry about a thing. Um, you know, I remember one day in the, I was, we used to be in airports back in the old days. And we could be there legally and go anywhere, distribute books. And I just remember we carry huge bags of books on our shoulders from one place to another. And I remember going up an escalator, carrying a, a large bag of books. And I kind of looked down, I said, you know, you're really working hard here. Do you really, as there was a voice in my head said, said, a voice in my head said, do you really want to do this? And I felt, yes, I want to do it. Prabhupada did it. I'm working hard. This is good work. I mean, the super soul was confirming in my heart. He said, yeah, it's good work. Just keep, <laughs> carry these books. That's so sort of the mood of samitpani shotriyam brahmanishtam tasmat gurum prapadyeta jignashu she utamam shabde, a different verse. Um, Tadvigna nartam Sagurun Iva Bhagat Samitpani Shotiram Brahmanishtam. Samitpani means to carry wood in your hands. You carry wood for the for the guru, you put it in the bring it back for the yagya, for the fire yagya. And then I was thinking how these books are made of, of wood also. They come from trees. And you have to carry them around too. Samit Pani, you carry it, put it in your hand, you hand it to somebody else, and it lights the fire of knowledge. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, this Yanagni Sarva Karmanam, that's the, the fire that burns to ashes all karma. What a powerful weapon against Maya, burns up all karma when somebody gets it. And so the hard work that you do, it's all worth it. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said to his disciples that when you take the trouble to go out to preach Krishna consciousness amongst those who are not acquainted and you're rejected or misunderstood, he said at that time you get chid rakta for your chid sharira, the spiritual blood for your spiritual body. And then it's a it's a liberated activity. I mean, you're using your, your activities, you're using your mind. I always tell the devotees for the Sankirtan that it's good to lose a little sleep over this. You should live on the edge. Like make a goal that, you know, it's a little bit of a stretch. And try to make it. I find that when we make goals for Sankirtan, and then you you may make the goal because you're sitting with all the devotees, everyone feels very uh, cheerful. Yes, let's do the marathon, make the goal. And then you walk away and think, wow, now how are we going to actually do this? <laughs> how can we actually make this happen now? And once you... Once you set the goal and you say, we're going to do this, then the energy starts to flow in. And that's Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Not until, if you if you hold back and you say, uh, maybe, you know, don't make, I mean, how would you feel if someone didn't have counter beads on their bead bag? You'd think, oh, they're not really practicing devotional service. <laughs> they're not counting anything. They never set a goal. Oh, I just chant all day. So when we set the goal and we feel a little nervous, and then we see that Lord Chaitanya gives the instruction how to do it. 
this is Rameshwar Prabhu told me this when I interviewed him for my book because he was famous as a uh, one of the BBT trustees in Los Angeles, one of the original trustees. And Prabhupada told him in front of all the devotees, you have to print all 17 volumes of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita within two months. And Rameshwar said, that's impossible, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. And then Prabhupada walked on. And Rameshwar told me that he was standing there and then he, he realized, well, it may be impossible, but I still have to do it because my guru just told me I have to do it. So it's impossible, but I still have to do it. And he said the, the second he got the resolve in his heart that, yes, I'm going to do it, that's when all the ideas started pouring into his mental system. And he and Radhabalava Prabhu, who is his uh, uh, co-trustee, they ran after Prabhupada. They caught up to the walking party on the beach, and they were very excited and animated. And they said, Prabhupada, you know, uh, we'll do it, we'll do it, but we, we have ideas. We need concessions in order to get it done. And Prabhupada granted all the concessions and put Los Angeles on a marathon. And then, of course, he told everyone who was in the marathon and who – and they, they were successful in doing this impossible feat that they would all go back to Godhead for their hard work. And then he noted in his letter that, by the way, you're one day late. <laughs> he missed it by one day. Um, so I, I always feel that uh, we grow in, in each one of our yatras when we come together with, with a clear goal. Book distribution is easier to, to make these clear goals because it's, it's so quantifiable. You can count how many books you're going to do, count how much you're going to collect, how many days, how many people. And Prabhupada put it as the seventh principle, of uh, the seventh purpose of ISKCON. And he said, by doing this one, you'll achieve the, the aforementioned six purposes. So first of all, it's an unassailable uh, service. It was so dear to Prabhupada and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. And also, he gave so many instructions about it. They're irrefutable. Uh, that's why I wrote the book to make sure that it was irrefutable. And, um, and then, uh, you know, he did it himself. And there's so much evidence. I've given just a couple of drops of what the evidence is about how important it is and how effective it is. So, Here's what I've been saying recently about reaching our goals and moving forward and growing our sankirtan. The first thing is the number is important only because we're planting a flag in the ground and saying we're going to reach this point together. And it's what it makes of us to reach the goal that's important. Numbers can go to infinity and birds fly in the sky as, as high as they're able, but the sky is unlimited. So the number can always get bigger. So we can't say, okay, we reached a pinnacle and now we're on a plateau and we did enough. We'll always want to do more. So it's not for the, a particular number. Now, even if we do millions, uh, you know, 20 million as Radhi Sham Prabhu had suggested. <laughs> you see, this Krishna speaks through his devotees like this. Um, <laughs> but the point is, when we when we take a goal together, and and we commit to it, and then we become nervous about it, how are we going to do this? Prabhupada once said, when you when you get an order from from Krishna, from your guru, and you don't know how to do it. He said, you should pray, how can I do? How can I do? How can I do? Keep asking, how can I do? And then what happens is Krishna shows you how you can do it. And that's where we grow. It's in that gap between what we commit to do and the anxiety, and then Lord Chaitanya coming in and showing us, here's how you can do it. That's where the miracles happen. The Krishna consciousness movement is about miracles. 
Without miracles, if we live in a plateau, if we just live in a plateau where we're not constantly trying to improve and do more, then we find all of the arguments and we find all of the uh, friction. There's already friction. There's always going to be friction between human beings because we all have different natures. But you don't notice it when you're working together <laughs> towards a worthy goal. You notice it when you don't work towards the goal and you're on the plateau and all you have to do is fight about, you know, who's, who's living in the right way, who's implementing the rules and regulations the right way. The transcendental aspect of our movement, it's all transcendental, but the point is what keeps us on that upward trajectory that's exhilarating, that's fun, that's exciting, that's, it's a mission, is that we're trying to do more for Lord Chaitanya in the right ways and taking some risks together. And, and that's what attracts people to a movement. A movement's got to move, and that's the part that does. We have to make it move. So I love these points in time, you know, like we just had Bhadra Purnima. And, you know, it's just, some people said about Bhadra Purnima, well, you know, some somebody said, well, it doesn't, golden throne means the sun, and, you know, it could be, you know, at different intervals, uh, thousands of years, the real Bhadra Purnima, it doesn't matter. The main point is, <laughs> We, we always look for an excuse to plant that flag and say, we're going for this you know, together. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go for the next big thing. And because of what it makes of us to achieve it. And the other thing I've been saying lately, because it's my heartfelt realization, is that it's not so important what we do as how we do it. How we do something together is more important than ultimately what we achieve. And it's more pleasing to Krishna, the mood in which we do it. And so cooperation, the cooperative mood, I really like and advocate for teamwork. Devotees automatically compete. Devotees, everybody does. It's natural. It's there in the spiritual world. But if we engineer teamwork, we don't have to worry. The competition will always be there anyway. You don't have to pour too much fuel on that fire. It automatically burns. But if you do advocate for teamwork, all for one and one for all, we're working together in this, it's, it's naturally pleasing to Krishna to see cooperation. In fact, Prabhupada practically equates bhakti with cooperation. Cooperate with Krishna, cooperate with each other for the sake of it. Everyone knows, it's almost cliche, your love for me will be shown by how much you cooperate, and so forth. And uh, this is an austerity, to cooperate together, to do something that's a worthwhile cause. That's where we find sama. We find, okay, I have to somehow or other stay balanced and understand how other people are feeling, and I have to take time to communicate uh, and uh, make connections. And then all of the ways in which I, I have to reform my own uh, senses in order to cooperate with others for the greater good, it's pleasing to Krishna, and it's also the process of self-realization as Krishna talks about in numerous places in the Bhagavad Gita, that you should learn this art of being sama, of uh, being uh, equal to others. And so uh, Sankirtan is the lifeblood and you're famous, your yatra is famous. It's famous. And uh, what you do there has an effect on the rest of the world. That's another a point I really like, and that is that 
if you do the right thing wherever you are, even if you're isolated, Krishna makes it, he exports it. Our real strength is our integrity, our cooperation, doing things in the right way. Strength comes from integrity. And also, when you do something nice for for Krishna, like develop a really strong Sankirtan party, then it has an effect on the whole world, even if you're in one place. And Prabhupada sat in Radha but he was contemplating how to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And there's a way it leaks out, and it goes everywhere if it's if it's nice. And that's what makes life worth living, especially in Kali Yuga, because it's so overwhelming, overwhelmingly full with faults. Isn't it so nice to be able to do some damage to the Kali Yuga, some legitimate damage to the Kali Yuga by making devotees? You know, you make one person a devotee, it's such a big victory. You distribute one book, you get it out there, it's such a big victory. And if you can organize and do more than one book, you do 10 books, 100 books, a million books. Uh, Prabhupada said it's, he, he would give all these metaphors like in wartime, raining from the skies like anything. The books are falling into the laps of the conditioned souls. So the marathon is coming and we're, we've been working over the last six years or so to develop a global team. It's starting to work now actually and one of the one of the points we saw when it really started working was bhadra purnima so what we've been concentrating on is making connections all over the world with the various leaders who are vitally interested in in expanding book distribution to its rightful level we're at a hobby level right now in the world as far as iskon goes we want to get to the level of covering the earth with Srila Prabhupada's books. There are other organizations, the, the Gideons people, they're getting more money and they're using it and distributing many more units of their books than we are. So we're going to pass them. I guarantee it. You can write it in your book. We're going to pass the Gideons and everybody else because through cooperation in a global team, we'll be able to open up the pipelines so big and we have the best books in the world we have the bhagavatam so we've been working at this to make coalition uh, connections with devotees all over the world india connected with uh, north america north america connected with new zealand australia new zealand australia all of us connected uk europe russia uh, china africa all the continents represented and, and all of us moving in the same direction towards world goals. So what, what we're looking at this uh, particular marathon now and how we've conceived it really is that, you know, the last three months of the year are really productive in our movement. And we'd like to, at a regular, as a regular function, have these three months set aside for a big push altogether. Because people are in different schedules. Some places people are available in December. Other times people are more available in October, November. So we take the full th three months. This year we conceived a, 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 the, the entire three months in a campaign called Live to Give. And the, the number, the 2 million Bhagavad Gita is, is a reasonable number. It doesn't mean no other books. It means all the other books too, going at the same time. But at least, at least, and we always say this with goals, always put that clause in. It's like a legal term, at least 2 million Bhagavad Gita's. Uh, and, and so we, we've, we've been in touch with as many leaders as possible around the world to calculate how everyone's done globally. And the 2 million number is a, is a global goal. And one of the main reasons, you know, we picked that is because we, 
We feel that it's doable globally. And also it's one of the first times that we've measured together on a global scale, a goal that we're working on as one team, one global team. Of course, India has the lion's share of that goal because you're so organized and so many powerful leaders and devotees in India. My favorite are, uh, leaders are, happen to be in Pune. Um, sitting in this class. So um, it's exciting. It's an exciting time uh, during the pandemic. Um, you know, our motto from the beginning has been don't waste a good crisis. It's a time when you can make quantum leaps and, and really move forward and discover new technologies, new ways of doing things. And it's really worked actually in the United States in Many places we've tripled what we did before uh, during the lockdown. It's actually been a benefit for us to concentrate in other areas. Uh, through telephone, internet, we've been doing much more than we were before. And so that's another example of where there's a will, there's a way. And if you put it before Lord Chaitanya and say, what can we do? We have to do huge to please you. So please show us the way, please send us the resources, please give us the intelligence. So this is an historic time in the world for us all to come together. And uh, we, we uh, in ISKCON, when we have these victories, resounding victories, like Bhadra was a resounding victory, we all work together all over the world, collective victory. That's something we can show. Uh, to ourselves that yes, we're growing, that's, we're going in the right direction. And uh, this marathon now with 2 million Bhagavad Gita's at least, uh, working together and, and uh, keeping the scores in front of us is, a, is another opportunity for this. Now, uh, st uh, I've run out of, a lot, uh, run up the clock here. So I would just wanna see if you have any reflections or questions you wanna ask. And also, Radhi Sham Prabhu, I check on your time also because I know you're all on the schedule there. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you Hare so much. Krishna. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. I remember last time when you had come, you explained us about the four. Uh, uh, amazing goals of book distribution. One was uh, high sadhana, then uh, the more you show, the more you sell, then uh, get organized and get books. So now in this pandemic, how do we go house to house? Because especially in Maharashtra, we have a great uh, infected place. We cannot, we can do it through Zoom. So could you please uh, explain these four golden points in a way where we can actually make it happen, even though in this, this situation. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. What is your name? Uh, Mahatma Priyadas. Ah, uh, Mahatma Priya Prabhu. Hari Bo. So good to see you. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so, um, of course, we call these the four laws of book distribution. The first law is your sadhana must be strong. Strict, serious, and sincere sadhana. Because when we have that, then there's a natural enthusiasm that comes out, and we're distributing the overflow. Get books. Luckily, you can still get books. They're working overtime in in Mumbai to print and make sure books are going to be available. And then uh, you come to the more you show, the more you sell and organize. So I can tell you what's working in other places. Uh, for instance, we we're finding that uh, because in America at least Silicon Valley, I'll start there. We were completely locked down. They gave a shelter in place order, which meant we couldn't leave the house except for important business. And you definitely couldn't go out and distribute books. And we didn't want our devotees exposing themselves either. And so at that time, we turned to the telephone and we started calling people on the phone. And we, f we found out that when calling people on the phone, it was actually easier because 
first of all, you don't have to drive anywhere. You don't have to walk up, knock on the gate, try to get in the door. They just answer the phone and you talk to them. And we found that um, any of the um, people that we already knew, we could ask for referrals. Referrals are really important because if somebody already knows somebody who might be interested, you can uh, use their name that, yeah, such and such sent me. So all of the devotees, uh, so at first we had this, we tried it, and the first week it was okay, but then I remembered um, I had a business for for some a little while when I was uh, in the Grahasta Ashram here, and uh, in the business we used to have what we call calling parties, and the calling party meant that uh, people sometimes devotees get nervous about calling on the phone, and then we so what we do we get everyone together in one place. And then you'd call and you'd be around all your friends. So you're calling around your friends so you're not nervous. Uh, so then how would we do that on lockdown? We have a, a Zoom meeting where we have all the devotees get on the Zoom. And then on the Zoom call, they're calling. So we have it on mute, but then um, we could see every all the other devotees calling. And then for organization, we set up uh, spreadsheets. So everyone could go on a Google spreadsheet and we have all the lists of names of people who have ever been to the temple and any other place where we could find leads. And then the devotees would check off on the Google said, I just called this person, I called that person. And every time someone would sell a set of Bhagavatams, they would come off mute on Zoom and then they say, ah, I just sold a set. This person said this and that. And we became more and more organized so that we had various ways to take payment from people uh, and you could use uh, many of the different electronic ways of getting payment. And uh, then this, uh, uh, there was a, a party of brahmacharis out in New York, and they started doing it too because New York got a lockdown, or at least maybe they started doing something like that first or around the same time. And so, um, you know, they got successful. Other people heard about it. Uh, devotees in UK started doing it and it worked and everywhere that we've um, <clears throat> seen devotees trying this calling people rather than walking out and trying to go physically to their houses it's been very successful and my point is this uh, someday the pandemic is going to be over someday but in the meantime if we can build a new pipeline that goes parallel with our outside preaching where we go door to door on the street. We have this other aspect that's already developed through the phone and internet. Then we're going to have a much bigger pipeline when it, when it comes to Sankirtan after the pandemic's over. Prabhu, does, does that help or do you have any follow-up question? Well, this was overwhelming, Prabhu. Thank you so much. It was oh, I'm so happy. It was overwhelming. Thank you so much. It was Yes, I'm so happy. Great. Well, you know, if you can if you can sell books, uh, you could sell them anywhere. It's the same thing. And so you just call and say if you call a few people and they say no, I'm not interested, that's the same thing on the street. You talk to three people that are not interested. But if you talk to 10 people and one says I'll take one, then you know that's good. In America, we have this sport called baseball. So if a professional baseball player can get up to bat, like you have cricket, they have bats in cricket, and the and the the, the baseball player three times out of ten can get on base, and get a hit, what you call getting a hit, then they pay him millions of dollars, three out of ten. So if you start calling people and then like seven people say no, don't worry about it. You just get one out of 10, two out of 10, three out of 10, you're doing huge. And it's the same, same anywhere. People are people. And they'll be happy to hear from you usually on the phone. Radhi Sham Prabhu, is there, is there time for another question or two? Or should we start wrapping it up? We have 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay.
ఏ కొంచిపేరి క్యాంప్ టెంపుల్ రాధా కొంచిపేరి టెంపుల్ లలిత్ మాధవ్ ప్రభు హరే కృష్ణ హరి బౌల్ హరే కృష్ణ రోజి హరి కృష్ణ రోజి లాస్ట్ టైం వెన్ యూ కేమ్ టు పూణే ఐ వాజ్ వెరీ ఫార్చునేట్ టు అసోసియేట్ విత్ యూ ఐ సో దట్ వెన్ యూ started speaking in front of people whether you may be christian or muslim or whoever you may be i saw one rickshaw driver driver uh, he also took bhagavad gita from you and when you start start speaking it uh, seems like uh, nectar comes out from your mouth so i don't know what is the secret behind this uh, uh, <laughs> uh, nectar can you please share prabhu i was very happy to be there in pune that's probably the happiness i was feeling to be with you i i i feel joyful when i'm on sankirtan sometimes you know i was telling this to devotees cuz uh, every once in a while i have a dream where i'm i'm out on book distribution do you ever have that you're sleeping dreaming and you're on book distribution if i can sell a book when i'm dreaming i always wake up happy like oh, my life's a success i sold a book while i was sleeping and and dreaming and and uh sometimes i can't sell a book when i'm sleeping and i'm i'm dreaming i'm trying to sell a book but i can't nobody will take and i wake up very sort of <laughs> unhappy but the point is this it's it's such a joyful activity i mean it's so exciting it's got everything that you'd ever want going out and meeting all kinds of people and uh convincing them to take a bhagavatam i mean one of the one of the sites that i i live for is and you've seen this many times uh, somebody buys a book and then you walk past a while later and you see they're sitting there reading it I mean to me that it's it's so fulfilling to watch somebody read one of Prabhupada's books because the experience I had when I first read as Radhi Sham Prabhu said I got a back to god magazine first it was the first exposure I had first time I saw Prabhupada and and read anything he or his disciples had written and it was such it it was like after millions and millions of births this is what super soul was it was telling me heart you just you got there you're here i there's it's incomparable the first time reading one of the books so to me it's such i, I that was a visceral experience i had and so when i see other people get them and they they take them in their hands i mean there was when we were in gujarat there were this young couple and they were on a break from one of the stores and they were smoking cigarettes and we came over you know i was with a large group because there were devotees following me and we walked over there and i could see they tried to <laughs> hide them put them behind their back cuz they were embarrassed they probably came from a good family and somehow or other they got into that bad habit and uh i was talking to them for a little while and they were reluctant cuz they felt sinful and you know there was some crustiness about them because of just being having bad association but then gradually gradually something happened some miracle happened and one of them took a book and they had to put their cigarette down in order to get the the lakshmi out to pay and it just feels like such a victory it's so, it's such a happy occasion uh, nothing else compares to it really that when the prophet's books go in so i naturally feel joyful when i go out to distribute books i'm not saying it's always easy there's sometimes there uh rough spots and i learn a lot from that too i mean i started distributing books when i was in my teens and i was just thinking about it the other day that i must have talked to you know tens of thousands of people you know just every day over and over again talking to people and i learned a lot it's really true what shila bhakti siddhanta said that when you're out there mixing it up with everybody you kind of learn something about yourself like one thing i learned as an example is that it doesn't pay to be impatient it doesn't pay to be fruitive either 
It doesn't pay to get angry because you get immediate feedback from your environment. I remember one time I was in the St. Louis airport and I had a very fruitive mentality about distributing the books. I think we were having a competition or something and it was the modes were really uh, in rajas and uh, somebody didn't take a book and they said something to me and I became angry. And I remember that uh, my, my face, my body, my chest, everything was polluted. And from, from, for the next hour or so, nobody would even stop and talk to me because they look at me and they, it was like this, they could look and see you're contaminated. Get out of here. And I thought, how can they tell? And, and so I'm, what I'm saying is it, 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 it's such a complete activity going on Sankirtan. You're doing the right thing. You're out there. It's an unassailable. It just feels like a big relief to me. The only thing that comes close is a parikram, like going around Govardhan Hill. You're just out. You're free. You have your bead bag. You can just walk. And there's not a problem in the world that can't be solved by just walking around Giri Raj. And the same thing, only more of, more of it from going out on book distribution. So that's why I feel joyful just meeting people and, uh, you know, going through that activity, following the footsteps of what Prabhupada did, going door to door. It's, it's amazing that he did that and that we can emulate what he did. Are you all locked down now? Or what's the situation in the city? I mean, is it, uh, is it uh, severe in Pune? I heard that Pune has a lot of cases. Yes, true. Actually, uh, temple is, actually, we cannot go outside for book distribution. And uh, devotees are also not coming to temple. Situation is very bad. Actually, so many cases of uh, COVID-19 uh, we got here. Wow. Amazing. So we, we need your prayers so that we can go out for book distribution. Dear Srila Prabhupada, dear Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if you so desire, please empower the devotees of the Pune temple to be able to distribute books as freely as they wish. Please give them all facility, resources, intelligence, and everything necessary so they can excel in book distribution now during this next up and coming few months and forevermore. Thank you for considering my request. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And uh, for this uh, 2020 marathon, being uh, next year, Srila Prabhupada's 125th uh, appearance day. <coughs> so, Radhe Shampru and uh, Pune devotees together, we are having a target of uh, distributing 4 lakh Maha Big Books for coming marathon. Oh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare I've been hearing a lot about you uh, from some professionals who are, uh, you know, taking inspiration from you at ISV. And uh, I hear a lot about uh, the way you keep all the devotees they're inspired and they are doing uh, lots of service of food distribution, Sankirtan movement there. Uh, as our first question, I'd like to share that as I was hearing you for last uh, half an hour. Uh, one other. I was wondering that we also did some kind of preaching during the lockdown online and uh, as I was hearing from you, I was thinking maybe we can accommodate the Sankirtana for book distribution along with this preaching and maybe something can come up. So some ideas are coming, popping up after hearing from you. So I thank you for that. Uh, a small, I mean, practical uh, problem in uh, this outreach uh, during lockdown is Prabhuji that the transportation of books, that was extra on a practical level. 
So whatever the cost of the book, in addition to that, there is a transportation cost. So how do we handle that? I mean, when we go hand to hand, that's like uh, one thing. But then transportation is in itself extra cost than what it actually costs the book. So how do we handle that on a practical level? Would you like to come? Sure. Yeah, thank you very much, Prabhu. As far as costs go, these things all happen regularly. You always have to be flexible. And in cost, really, it there is some kind of concern about if it gets too expensive, but there's always ways in which you can adjust the price of the book to take care of uh, transportation at a certain time. One thing that I recommend is um, don't just sell books, but actually offer people intangibles that you can't pay for. And one of the reasons that Bhadra Purnima was successful was that what people were getting was not just a book or a set of books for a certain price, but it's actually they're getting an opportunity to help somebody else go back to Godhead or themselves go back to Godhead by giving the gift. That was the part that was very intriguing. And this is what I mean by an intangible. So when we offer uh, books, uh, there's it, it's good to innovate and find ways that you can package them with all kinds of other things so that the cost becomes neutralized. Because a cost, if you look at it as paper and ink and how much it costs to transport, and this is a, a set cost, then it becomes uh, something they can compare elsewhere, and it's a relative uh, point. But if you, if you add something into it that you can't get anywhere else, uh, an add-on, and then you, you give them the price for that, then it makes it much uh, much more appealing to people. In other words, they're not buying books, they're buying an opportunity. So we mix together things a lot. Uh, when we're offering you know, books, we offer packages that go with it and so forth. The, you know, the other point that we had is just giving an example, which was that uh, people got the opportunity to have their name at the yagya for Bhadra Purnima, right? So when they're getting a book, there's this whole experience that they're not just buying a set of books or giving a set of books, but you know they're getting an opportunity, according to Shastra, to go back to Godhead and also to be named in a yagya. How often does that happen? So to innovate like that, you can get around price, price differences. But you just have to do what you have to do. If you need to charge a little more, it's not a big deal. Or, you know, if you need to package it in a certain way to, to, to neutralize the, the cost, you can do that, too. Thank you so much. For yeah, when we ask for donations, sometimes people say, how much should I give? And we say, well, th there's no minimum, but more importantly, there's no maximum. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, when people, when they say, how much I, well, we try to keep it under $100, but in your case, we're thinking about making an exception. So, you know, a lot of times when you, when you become a little more um, bold about the price, you know, and, and talk about it in bigger terms, then that also helps to neutralize things. Thank you for the question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much for your wonderful association, bro, today. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Great to see you. Thank you. Uh, bro, you were telling this point that, you know, the greatest welfare activity, what we can do is to carry Krishna and give Krishna in the form of books. You know, being in temple, we have got many departments where we are serving. Like uh, we are serving as a pujari, we are taking care of kitchen, we are doing preaching, college preaching and other things. So... During the marathon time, we developed this taste. Uh, we developed this taste of going and doing this book distribution. But during the other other part of the year, we hardly take part in this uh, book distribution. So, how do we develop this taste of you know carrying uh, carrying these books and doing this, especially throughout the year? So, can you help us with this, bro? 
Well, you know, Prabhu, that about the uh, the monthly Sankirtan festival has accomplished that in many places because when you take one day a month that's non-marathon time and you say, okay, this is an opportunity for everybody in the community to have this experience together. And then, of course, you have to organize it so that everybody can go out. As I, say, I, as I like to say about the MSF, it's like breathing. You have to get oxygen in a body. And the, the temple community is a body and it needs oxygen. So how do you get that? When you go out, it's like exhale. You go out or go in, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying if the activity, calling on the phone, whatever, you take that risk. It's kind of an exhale. You're meeting other people outside just the group we're in, in this community, uh, for the purpose of giving them Krishna conscious. And then when you have the experience, and it always happens. The people you know that take a, a, an hour, two hours, whatever, from their other services for that one day a month, and they have a chance, they sell a book, you know, something happens, they, they bring that experience back, and that's the oxygen coming back into the community. I saw it, and I lived at uh, 340 West 55th, that big, uh, you know, tall building in New York. I was stationed there in 1976, 77, and uh, Prabhupada came there. He, he liked that building very much. There were about 350 devotees living in one building. And Prabhupada told, he, he said, uh, you know, one day a month, everybody should go out. He said, Prabhupada, what about this? What about that? He said, just leave one pujari. <laughs> and so we did it. And I was a brahmachari at the time. And I remember, you know, all these uh, women, children, everybody going out all at the same time. And I was thinking like, well, how many books are they going to do? You know, they don't know how to do this. But the score was huge. That's where I got the idea for the monthly Sankirtan Festival. It's not my idea. It was Prabhupada's idea. And so, you know, if you if you organize it, give people a chance. You know, let the kids go out. Let, you know, women, children, householders, people who, you know, everybody get a chance at one day, one at least one day a month. And then, you know, you get that oxygen. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So it was very enlivening uh, to hear from your Prabhu today. You spoke about uh, Tapyante, Loka Tapena, and uh, about Shaunakadi Rishis, or Vedavyas, and Rajshiva. How all the Vaishnavas are compassionately always thinking of the welfare of the people of the world. And uh, you set a very nice uh, mood uh, for our practice of devotional service. Uh, you also told us about how it is uh, always good to have a bit of a stretch, a little less sleep, and that gives uh, ecstasy and thrill in our spiritual life. And uh, also we should not uh, just mindlessly distribute, but have a very set goal. You know, that was a very nice, funny, funny example of having a bead bag without the counter beads, you know. That was a very nice example to us. And also... Um, you connected it spiritually, saying that we should always keep asking, you know, how can I do, how can I do, and Lord Chaitanya will give us ideas. Uh, and such prayer actually attracts mercy and uh, uh, also uh, right guidance. And uh, uh, as uh, you have uh, traveled across the globe and uh, you have observed, uh, wherever human beings come together, there is always some amount of uh, friction. But... Uh, uh, where the integrity and uh, team playing and cooperation, cooperative spirit uh, is given uh, emphasis, uh, then uh, one can actually forget all the friction uh, becoming absorbed in the fire of Sankirtan. You know, that was a very nice point. <clears throat> so, uh, and also I have always observed hearing you uh, gives all of us a lot of uh, positivity and high energy uh, hearing you because... Uh, you have been like this uh, since several years and the, I feel that that is one of the reasons for the international success of book distribution uh, that is initiated by you all across the globe. I, I have been observing the results in North America also. Uh, gradually, year after year after year, it was building up 
now you have mercifully extended yourself to india also in the recent past which is a great uh, benediction for india uh, and indian yatra and all of us so we are very grateful to you and thankful to you for uh, expanding this positive energy in book distribution uh, all across the globe i used to sometimes lament some years ago that uh, now the uh, traditional type of iskon temple distributing prabhupada books is becoming very very meager and uh, where becoming very small in iskon i used to think like that but you have uh, changed the history uh, it was actually flowing in one direction and you have turned it to make uh, make make it a u turn and you are again taking it up so i i pray that this kind of positive energy that you have created uh, remains in iskon forever and uh, this type of book distribution keeps happening exponentially greater and greater so we all uh, want to jointly express our heartfelt thanks to you love the hari bol hari bol hari bol hari bol jai vaishnav shikha prabhu ki shila prabhupad ki shila prabhupad transcendental book distribution ki thank you vancha kalpataru best prabhu vancha kalpataru best kripasan dev chapter chitanam pad and bhav vaishnav anant koti vaishnav vrinda ki ja thank you very much radhisham prabhu I think of you fondly and often, and just seeing you all today was really heartfelt. I mean, we need this connection. It's such a, a strange time in the world, and to see all of you there, uh, it was just really um, edifying. Thank you very, very much. And um, please keep me on your list. Hari Krishna. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yeah, we are we are showing the deities of our temple of Darshan. Will be seen. This is Radha Kunj Bihari Temple. Oh, sorry, Radha Vandavan Chandra Temple. Hey, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Gaur Nita here. जगन्नाथ बोल दिया सुभद्रा में राधा कुंज बेर का जैसे दिख रहे थे वो दिस इज वेंकटेश्वर बालाजी तिरुपति बालाजी वी हैव वेरी ब्यूटीफुल डीटी हियर Hare Krishna all the devotees please join for guru puja now Jai Prabhu Pad Jai Prabhu Pad Jai Shila Prabhu Pad जय प्रभुपाद जय प्रभुपाद जय प्रभुपाद जय श्री प्रभुपाद